Hello and welcome, I'm Ken Gaudi from Sax Comprehensive and in this video we will look at the technique of slap tonguing. Slap tonguing is a technique used on the saxophone whereby the notes that you play have a percussive effect. Now this percussive effect can range from a purely percussive effect so that the pitch of the notes cannot be recognised to pitch notes with a percussive effect. The technique of producing slap tonguing remain the same but there are various variations within this and depending on what variation you use will determine what type of sound you actually produce. Because there is a variety of sounds produced within the slap tonguing technique, different musicians will name them by different names. So some musicians refer to them as the open slap or the closed slap or the dry slap or the reverse slap. Some refer to them as the bell effect or the click effect or the quasi effect or some other name to refer to these different types of sounds. In this video, we will get you started on looking at how to produce a slap tongue in effect and with practice and with experimentation you should be able to produce the other types of sounds. So let's get started with some simple animation on how to produce the slapping effect. In slap tongue your tongue works like a plunger or suction cup. When a plunger is pushed onto a flat surface the air between the plunger and the flat surface is forced out. When the plunger is pulled back an airtight seal is created between the plunger and the flat surface. As the plunger continues to pull away, it creates a vacuum which causes the flat surface to stick to the plunger. If the flat surface is fixed in place, then eventually there will come a point where the flat surface cannot move anymore, causing the airtight seal to be broken. This will result in a loss of vacuum or suction and the flat surface will spring back to its original position. When trying to create the slap tongue effect, your tongue will need to function exactly like a plunger or suction cup. First place your tongue on the reed such that it closes off the mouthpiece. Next flex your tongue so that a vacuum or suction is created. This is what happens immediately when a plunger starts to move away. This may involve you quickly sucking air out between your tongue and the reed to create this airtight seal and a vacuum. Now quickly pull your tongue down while blowing a quick puff of air into the saxophone. This will cause the reed to move away from the mouthpiece. At some point, the airtight seal will break and the reed will slap back onto the mouthpiece causing a slapping sound. The puff of air is to amplify this sound. You should experiment with how you pull your tongue away from the reed, either in parallel with the reed or by removing first the part of the tongue that is in contact with the tip of the reed like a rolling motion, as this will affect the sound that you produce. There are a few things that you need to be aware of. Number one, as you start to learn the technique, because it's more aggressive than normal tonguing, you will destroy your reeds quickly by either crushing or splitting the tip. So it may be a good idea to use cheaper reeds until you get the hang of it. You could also use plastic or synthetic reeds as they will last longer. Number two, be patient when learning this technique. As you start to learn, you'll probably aggressively attack the reed with your tongue, which can cause your tongue to become bruised or even cut. If you do experience discomfort, then you should stop and continue later. If you persist and eventually bruise or cut your tongue, you will not be able to continue with the practice due to the pain. Even though synthetic reeds will not break and so last longer, it means that your tongue will experience the full force of the contact of the tongue in, whereas the cane reed will snap at the tip and therefore apply less punishment to your tongue. Number three, as you want the reed to be flexible, it is a good idea to use a softer reed and a larger tip opening mouthpiece. Number four, slap tongue in sounds the best on the lower registers, that is the notes without the octave key. When you start learning this technique, I suggest that you start learning it on a fully assembled saxophone or on a fully assembled mouthpiece. The advantage of a mouthpiece is that you could take it away with you anywhere and practice. If you find it a bit difficult, then you could take a gradual approach, starting by using spoons. The benefit of using a spoon is that the surface of the spoon is curved and it helps you to create the suction and vacuum that you need. Once you're able to create that suction on the spoon, you can move on to a flat, flexible surface like a flat piece of plastic or even a palette knife would do. Once you can create the suction on that, you can move on to a smaller flat surface such as the reed or the reed connected to the mouthpiece. So 
there were some ideas to help you develop the ability to create the suction or the vacuum that you need. Imagine this piece of wood is the reed and my hand is the tongue. What you can do, you can put your, your tongue on the reed, but before you fully put your tongue in the reed, you suck out the air between the reed and your tongue. And then when you put your tongue fully on the reed, you've created that bond, that vacuum, that suction, so that when you put it off, you'll actually pull the reed away from the mouthpiece. Also what you can do, you could put your tongue on the reed and then flex your tongue, manipulate your tongue so that it creates that vacuum in the middle of your tongue which causes the reed to stick to your tongue and then when you pull away your tongue, it pulls away the reed. Obviously you need to experiment to find what is the best um, situation for you. Some individuals when they pull off their tongue will pull it off just straight down. Others will flex it like a rolling motion, others will pull it down and push it forward at the same time. So it's pulling it down and pushing it forward at the same time. But again, you need to experiment to find what works best for you. In order to create a loud slap tongue effect, you're gonna to have to blow air into the saxophone and that's where the difficulty comes because not only do you have to create the suction of the vacuum, not only do you need to move your tongue in order to pull the reed away from the mouthpiece, but you also need to blow air into the saxophone at the same time. Now you can create a suction between your tongue and the roof of your mouth simply by sucking air in. So I can go, or I can make it more forceful, but air is going in and no air is going out. So what you can do is try and do the same thing, the same effect by creating this suction with your tongue and the roof of your mouth. But as you begin to move your tongue away from the roof of your mouth, blow air out. And obviously experiment uh, in the way you actually do that. So if I put a sheet of paper in front of my face, So the puff of air is sort of like, some people have referred to it as like a cough, or like spitting. But it should be a short burst of air to get that short slap tongue in effect. If you want to correct the pitch slap tongue in effect, then obviously you want to make sure that you have your correct embouchure and that you're applying enough pressure on the reed to sound a note. If you're having difficulty with this, then what you could do is to blow an ordinary note with your ordinary embouchure then do the same thing but at the beginning put the slap tongue in effect on it and then gradually as you do it reduce the length of the note until you get that short slap tongue in pitched effect <laughs> So that was me playing after just two weeks of trying to learn this technique. Obviously I've got a long way to go. I need to increase the volume of the sound, but it does take between one and three years for you actually to get your head around it and to master it. So next year I will upload another video showing you all the different sounds that you can produce with this slap tongue in effect. Things that I have found out is that if you use a synthetic reed, then you can create more suction than if you use a cane reed. The other things that I need to mention is that since trying to learn this technique in the last two weeks, I have destroyed countless number of cane reeds. I have actually bruised my tongue and cut it numerous times. But once I get better at it, then obviously I won't bruise my tongue and I won't destroy any reeds. Hopefully you found this video helpful and informative. If you did, then obviously give it a like and share with your friends. And uh, if you're not yet a subscriber, consider subscribing. And if this is one thing that you want to do, get into slap tonguing, then start now. And then next year, obviously, we can compare notes on how well we actually done. So I shall see you in the next video. Bye-bye.